thing here. All right, so uh, I'm just going to show you the difference between the loops. One is going to be the um, dry loop and a hard loop. The difference between dry loop and a hard loop. So uh, let's say dry loop. That's one thing, and that's going to be hard loop. That's the other. That's the other thing. What are the differences between these two? Okay. Uh, now, the dry loop here has something to do with the DSL. DSL. What's 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 a DSL? DSL stands for digital. Digital subscribers line. So that's DSL, DSL. All right. Okay. Now, yeah, DSL. Um, of course, you have heard of uh, the concept of uh, getting a DSL internet. What is it? Um, the DSL comes over telephone lines, over regular POTS lines. So that has to do with the POTS. All right. And the POTS stands for plain old telephone service. It's getting quieter now. Laying on telephone service, POTS, P-O-T-S. Okay. Um, so basically the internet can be delivered to a building or a household um, various ways. One of them would be DSL, digital subscribers line. There would be a cable line which goes through the coaxial cable. Uh, then uh, optical fiber, which uh, you're going to uh, learn about uh, by watching these two lectures that I'm uh, that I'm going to give you right now. Uh, and uh, over air satellite. Okay, uh, that's pretty much those two basic. Uh, so copper fiber or air. Right? Now, with the telephone line that contains DSL, you get the DSL over a telephone line, and there are two possibilities uh, that you can get. Uh, uh, you can have that phone line arranged. It can be a telephone line that contains the dial tone, which means you can use the telephone line just like the POTS line. You can connect a single line telephone set or SL, uh, SL single line, uh, or CO line, central office line. You can use that as a uh, regular telephone. Plus, on top of that, there is superimposed the digital subscribers line, which would be the um, um, the, the internet signal, okay? Now, the only thing uh, that has to be done when it comes to this, you need to install something that's called POTS filters. POTS filtering, okay? So the POTS filters have to be installed on the POTS lines uh, in order to separate the signal that has to go to a modem and the signal that has to go to the voice telephones. If you don't do that, it's still going to work, except when you are going to talk on the phone, excuse me, you're going to hear that uh, tiny little buzz, which is very annoying, which is going to be the digital subscribers line, um, digital noise. There are two ways of filtering that. They're using the POTS filtering. One way is uh, when you have a line coming in and uh, let's say it goes to one phone, all right? And then from there, it's daisy chained, which is parallel. It goes to another telephone and so on. Uh, so whatever, whatever there is um, telephone that you are plugging in, uh, to a wall, so let's say there's a telephone jack, right? 
at the wall. Here's a telephone jack, and here's a telephone here, okay? Uh, so if you plug in straight, you're going to hear that, uh, you're going to hear that uh, buzz. So over here, you need to plug in something that's called a POTS filter. Okay. And a POTS filter looks like uh, the, the, the uh, locally installed uh, POTS filter. It's just, you, you've seen it all probably, but it just looks like, like a box, okay? Maybe a rectangular box. And on one side, it has a RJ11 jack. And on the other side, it has RJ11 plug, right? So it goes like this here. So you plug that in here and you plug that to the telephone and uh, you're okay. That filters out that DSL signal. The other way, what you can do is if you have a central, uh, you can do it centrally. So when you go to the, something that's called demarcation point or demark point, Demark point, okay. Demark or demarcation point is um, uh, point of entry, right? So when you have um, uh, when you have a telephone system being brought in to your uh, main connection, main service, or like usually it's in the basement or in the utility room, then you install the centrally installed parts filter. All right, and you plug it into here, and over here you have different type of outputs. One is going to be the voice or the pots, and over here that's going to be DSL. So here is the main service, the pots and DSL all together. You can still pick it, you can still plug it in, you can dial the number, you can hear the dial tone, but whenever you're going to talk on the phone, you're going to hear that um, uh, annoying internet, uh, the DSL buzz, all right? So you can, you can uh, install a centrally located POTS filter right at the connection point where the, where the telephone line is brought in. And over here, you connect this, to all the other telephone lines that are going into the house or for the rest of the building. And over here, this goes to a modem. And, uh, and, and that's, that's how we can dissolve, uh, we can uh, solve uh, this, uh, this sort of an issue. Now, uh, but what I promised you is, was I was going to, um, tell you the difference between dry loop and a hard loop, okay? Okay, just give me a second here. Right. Busy shop today, okay? Make some room here. Today is a humid, hot and humid day, and everything takes extra longer time, extra long time to get ready. All right, so there's a possibility that somebody might want to order a DSL, internet over the DSL. And DSL only. So there's a telephone line coming into the house and it has no dial tone because they don't want to pay for the, you don't want to pay for the phone, the land line, all right? So you don't want that, but you just want a DSL on it. So that's what's called a dry loop. It's a telephone line just over the parts line, parts pair, but there is no dial tone on it, so you cannot use that as a telephone anymore. And that's a very common practice for a nice few years now. 
uh, is because um, uh, everybody's got the cell phones now, right? But sometimes that's the only way to get the internet to some households or to some neighborhoods is through DSL. Somebody doesn't want to pay for the telephone service. They just want to pay, get the internet over the telephone line. So they would order something that's called a dry loop, okay? So a dry loop is a telephone line that contains only DSL signal, but it has no voice. Now, when it comes to, that makes life a little bit harder for us installers, because whenever you are searching for the telephone number, because that, that even though the telephone line doesn't have a dial tone, it is still, assigned a telephone number is you just can't call in that all right uh, and when you are coming over to do your installation and you're going to look for that particular telephone line among all the other ones that are punched on the bix you're going to get your bot set with the bix clip you're going to try to clip onto that pair wherever it's on the bix frame you're not going to hear the dial tone which means you can't dial remember the anac number an anac number is a number that you dial and the automatic circuitry picks it up and it tells you the exact pinpointed telephone number of that exact line so if that line is part of a rollover group it is not going to give you the main published number of the whole rollover group. It's going to give you, uh, by voice, it's going to tell you, you're calling from so-and-so-and-so of that particular hardwired telephone line. Right? So that's how you search for that. Now, when you have just a dry loop there, you are not going to be able to dial because there's no dial tone. So it's harder to look for it. So that's why it is important so that uh, whoever is installing those lines. So like, a, for example, there's gonna be like a Bell Canada or, or, or AT&T or any other company. Um, when they install those lines, it's actually very important that they physically label, they tag it. And it's a little tag, paper tag with the telephone number written on it. And it's basically tied in with a little piece of string to that uh, pair that is terminated, okay? And if it's not there, you are not gonna be able to find that line unless you have something that's called a DSL tester, which is more expensive than, uh, than the, just a little bat set or the, the installer's set. Uh, and not all the companies have it. You don't always have it in your van or in your uh, you know, arsenal of tools, okay? So that's, that's why it's very important. If you don't have the DSL tester, there's no way you can pinpoint among all the other lines that are installed um, uh, to pinpoint that number. Right? So um, that is a dry loop. Right? A dry loop is a POTS line that contains only DSL signal for the purpose of not having to pay for the whole service not having to pay for the DSL and for the voice line in order to save money because anybody, everybody has a cell phone anyway. So that's what people use it now these days, right? So that's a dry loop. Now a hard loop is something else. Hard loop is something to do with the ethernet connection, okay? Remember when um, um, we have the blue, orange, green, brown pairs. These are the pairs. That's for the ethernet. And remember from previous lectures, we established that when it comes, usually when it comes to CAT5e, right, only the orange and the green pairs are being used. That's CAT5e. When it comes to CAT6, um, all four pairs are being used. Now, let's just concentrate on CAT5e for the simplicity of things. One pair is receive, one pair is transmit. So the communication happens. Now, let's see here, orange is transmit and the green is receive. 
Which one is transmit, which one is receive? Well, that depends on which side you're looking from. If you're looking from this side, you're going to be seeing traffic going that, this way. And if you're looking from that side, you know, so if you're looking from one side, the transmitting pair might be green. But if you're looking on this side, the green would be the receiving pair on the piece of equipment here, all right? Uh, so sometimes for the di um, uh, purposes of um, for diagnostics, right? for testing the lines, right? uh, you need to loop it up. What do I mean by that? Basically, you connect, you just loop those, okay? The orange pair and the green pair. So somebody else or you or somebody else on the other end can connect a diagnostic equipment, whatever it might be, and test this line and perform the testing. And the testing could be for different things, could be for, uh, bandwidth could be for the transfer speed it could be for the crosstalk and whatnot but it is possible to connect one piece of equipment on completely other side it could be in a different building it could be in a different uh, location completely altogether uh, somebody can connect the testing equipment there and when you plug in the hard loop into the jack you are bridging, bridging the orange and the green, so the transmit and receive. So you're creating one continuous link. All right, so that is called a hard loop. How do we make one if we don't have one? Well, <coughs> excuse me, the easiest way to do that is take the Eight pair, one, two, there's the two middle prongs. So here's two middle prongs. Um, so this will be the blue. This will be the orange. Okay. Um, orange white, and it will be orange solid. And this would be the green slash white. And this would be just the green, all right? So that's how the wires continue, all right? So here's the orange. This is the RJ45 jack with the clip facing away from you. Here's pin one, here's pin eight, right here. Um, so basically what you do is you can just take one patch cord, just like this one here, Yeah, where is that? There it is. Just take one patch cord and just cut it right here. Just cut it, strip the wires. And when you strip the wires, you'll be able to see the oranges and the greens. So what you do is you just strip a little bit and you connect green solid to orange solid. And green stripe to orange stripe. So you connect the solids and the stripes together to create a continuous loop for diagnostic purposes. That's the only reason you wanna create it. You can buy a pre-made one, or if you wanna spend a little bit more time, you can uh, remember when we did the RG45 jacks, the modular, sorry, plugs, you can get a crimper and you can get a twisted pair going from this to that, and you just crimp it. So the oranges and the greens, right? And you just crimp it and you have, you know, nicely twisted. So then you're gonna have a nice and proper, properly made. But if you're in a pinch, you can just get one patch cord, which is gonna cost you maybe a dollar 75 or something, uh, cut it, strip it, twist those pairs together, make it as short as possible. And here's your diagnostic tool. So that's a hard loop. Right. Again, as a review of this short lesson here, dry loop is a POTS line. Hey. POTS line 
that only has a DSL signal. It doesn't have a dial tone, so it cannot be used as a telephone line. And it only carries the dig digital subscribers line, which is the internet over the telephone line, DSL. Dry lobe. It has internet signal. It doesn't have the voice circuitry plugged into it. Right? Hard loop is a diagnostic tool that's being used in the RJ45 or the Ethernet configuration or the T568 configuration for Ethernet line uh, purposes, testing purposes. Right? Now, uh, some time ago, uh, well, a nice few years ago, I was uh, sent for a service call um, to one of the huge uh, distribution companies, not going to use any names. And uh, it's, it was not the Ethernet line that had to be tested. It was the T1 circuitry that was supposed to be tested. And that involved me getting on the phone with the company who was testing it that they just installed the T1 circuitry. And I just had to plug in the um, dry, sorry, the hard loop onto the jack that was coming out from the T1 connection. And whoever was on the other side um, were able to log in to that circuitry and perform the diagnostic test and say, yeah, this thing is all good. We can make this thing active because it was a freshly installed line. So my service call was just to arrive on site, get a hard loop, plug it in, wait on the phone for them to do their thing on the keyboard. And they say, okay, you're good now. Unplug it, put it in my toolbox. Thank you very much, $200, <laughs> all right? Um, so, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so now I just, I just wanted you to know, because it's going to be on the last test. Uh, I needed you to know the difference between the hard loop and the dry loop. So now you know, okay? Now, this is the second last time that we're going to see each other here. Um, before I let you go, and point you to the uh, optical fiber lectures that are pre-recorded. Are there any questions about any of the stuff that we have done through the whole course of this short semester? Anything about the assignment? Uh, is there anything that uh, you are not clear on? If you don't have a immediate type of idea for a question, you know how to find me. You can, you're always welcome to send me an email. And uh, uh, I, try to, uh, I try to do my best to uh, respond as quickly as I can. And you could probably notice that by now, right? Uh, well, I mean, sometimes I answer the questions at three o'clock in the morning. Right? So when you wake up, you get the answer. Anyway, so uh, are you able to explain to what's missing from the assignment? All right, yeah. Yes, I can. Um, just uh, put this thing somewhere here. All right. Here. Uh, let's get some picture and picture. There we go. Just gonna zoom out a little bit with the camera. Here is the assignment sheets that I have. Okay, can you see this? Yes, we can. I like to zoom in a little bit that way. All right. So what we have, we have the main LAN room here with all the home runs, so all the wires basically home run to it. That's the main communications room. And from there, there will be line going to the main bundle with the J hooks that you marked on. And it's going somewhere here and maybe ending up here in the wall, going down the wall and you implement it at the jack or the data jack here, right? So everything here, everything home runs that way. All the, tele, the data jacks that are there are coming there. And I remember when we, um, 
uh, when we talked about creating a link, a straight link for everything, we have accounted for all the data jacks that are uh, on this end here, on the destination end. How are they going to be terminated in the land room? Okay. That's what's missing. What's missing there is a something that's called a patch panel. Which I've seen PoE switch. Yeah, no, oh, okay. Well, we're just doing the, uh, let's uh, just for the purpose of the simplicity things. All the other equipment is provided by whoever the third company that called us to do the infrastructure wiring just for this, this one contract, right? So in order to terminate the jack, you have to have a complete link. So here's the destination and here's the home run. Here's another destination. Here's a home run. Here's another destination. Here's a home run. Those other ends, they also have to be terminated at the other end. Each line is an individual dry line from one end to the other. You know, when we did the straight link, remember? The jack to jack, female to female, from here to here. We just did one piece of cable. But in the reality, those cables are longer. They're going in the ceiling, in the walls, and all that stuff. And they go, they're terminated. What you could do is you could just have one big bundle of just those loose jacks, but nobody does that, right? What you do is in the equipment rack, you have something that's called a patch panel. And a patch panel is a, is a piece of metal, to put it in the simplest way, with permanently installed jacks arranged in a certain way that you just terminate those wires, just like if you would do to regular jacks, but you just terminate them in this type of organized way, and that's called a patch panel. So, so uh, when uh, when you would get the quote on this job, and you get the literature or all the uh, information from the company that wants you to do the installation for, you would go and make all the calculations with the cable lengths and count the jacks and that, and then you would just go, hey, wait a second. Who's supplying the patch panel? Are you supplying the patch panel or are we supplying the patch panel? So that's when you pick up the phone and you know we call the guys, uh, say, look, uh, who's doing that? We need to have a patch panel because if we don't, none of it makes sense. What are you going to do with the other ends of the wires? That's, so that's basically, basically what, is, uh, what is missing there. Now, PoE switch. Um, uh, yes, so that's, uh, I'm glad you, uh, you use the PoE switch because that's what the PoE stands for. It stands for power over ethernet. What's power over ethernet? It is a DC voltage that is imposed onto the ethernet link. So you can plug in some sort of equipment that needs power, like an active piece of equipment that needs power to operate. And it could be a VoIP telephone set. All you have to plug in is this, because this internal circuitry that still has to be powered, you know, the LCD screen has to work, all the logic that is in there, it has to still work. Uh, wireless access point. It has to be powered because it's a transceiver. It transmits and receives the ethernet signal wirelessly through the laptops, through the tablets, uh, cell phones, and what other devices could be. Right? So that also has to be powered. So that's, that's why we use the PoE switch. So where it would be mounted on the rack would be usually below. And you use fudge cords, except shorter ones, for aesthetics and the switch also has ports and you just go one to one each every indiv each individual jack ethernet jack is terminated at the back of the patch panel making it a dry run straight link right? and why we are doing this is that because could we do this can we just bring those lines and terminate them with the RG45 plugs. Yes, we could. And some 
I'm just going to use the word cheap installations and they have to be small enough. They implement that idea, right? Problem with that is, or I'm gonna start with the advantage of doing it the other way, which is basically terminate here, terminate permanently on the other side of the patch panel is you have a permanent link. Anything that is movable or changeable is on this side of that and on the other side of that link. So it means this is permanently installed in the walls, which means it can be tested and it can be verified and it can be certified as a certain type of a link. It could be certified as CAT 5E link, it could be certified as CAT 6 link, it could be certified as a CAT 6A and so on. And this way, you know that this connection from here to here works. Now, when you have just when you eliminate the patch panel, which would just, I don't recommend doing that, uh, <clears throat> you, have, you, you have the permanent installation on this side, but over here, you just have something that just dangling in the air. You can't verify that. You can't, because you move that, it, behaves a little, it can behave a little bit different way. And when you move that, there's a possibility of uh, something getting physically damaged, all right? Cool, if it makes sense. Nice. All right, and, the diff and now when it comes to switches, uh, some of the switches are PoE, which is power over ethernet, and you pay a little bit more for that. And some of the switches are less expensive and they just have the signal routing possibility or capability, but uh, they don't have the PoE. Uh, so they are less expensive. Some of the, in a hybrid way made switches, they would have um, maybe first eight ports as PoE and the other ones are just uh, regular ethernet ports without the PoE. Right? Now, again, remember from the, from the last lecture, um, we were able to install something that's called the ethernet extender. Ethernet, no, 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 no. Hmm. Not Ethernet extender. That's when you want to make the Ethernet line longer than 300 feet and still pass the signal. You're not going to get the same speed out of it, but you're still going to get the connectivity of it. So if the speed is not that crucial, you're good. But for that, we're, I was talking about PoE. PoE injector. Right. I remember what that one was. It's a device that looks like a power supply. It's a box. That somewhere there it has a power cord. And you plug into the wall to get this power from. And it has two ports, one input port, one output port, and they are just ethernet ports. So from the, uh, between the switch, you put that in line between the switch, you interrupt one of those lines here. So that uh, would be used sometimes when there's already existing network and there's an order of installing an active device that requires PoE and the switch that is already there existing doesn't have PoE capability. So instead of going through the whole operation of replacing the switch, and that could be a complicated procedure because the whole facility operates as it is, um, and a lot of the switches have to be programmed certain way. So there could be a bigger operation. Uh, and just for one device, you can just install the PoE injector between the switch and the patch panel. And from then on, you have a PoE. So it'll be a PoE injector. And you need to plug it into power. Of course, at the rack location where there's the equipment room, this, uh, there's all kinds of power there because all the equipment has to be powered. So you're gonna find, find yourself a you know, power, uh, uh, power outlet and plug that in. So that's the uh, PoE injector. Any other questions uh, before we wrap up for today? And I'll just uh, show you, okay, what type of cable should be used for 
single line telephone and is it terminated in LAN room as well? Okay, let me just uh, think about it. What type of cable? All right. Um, well, for the single line telephone, um, you can just use regular telephone, which is uh, rated as CAT 3, category 3, which is sort of obsolete, right? However, for the single line telephone set, you don't, you, you don't need anything more, right? The problem with, well, not the problem, you have to have something that's called the RJ12 jack or RJ11 jack. It's just a regular telephone jack, okay? The difference between RJ12 and RJ11 is that RJ11 uh, only has two of those prongs utilized and all the other slots for the prongs are basically empty. They don't even have the prongs. RJ12 has a capability of two pairs. As far as the size, they're the same. You can, if you want, the regular data jacks that we're using, the RG45 jacks, that RG12 jack, you can, yes, you can plug in to the data jack and it's going to physically fit and it's going to make a proper connection with the two middle prongs. So, uh, you can, if you have a destination somewhere, uh, a desktop location, and it's going to, or to the patch panel somewhere, you don't have to plug that into the switch. You can just plug in another telephone cord here, and you can terminate that at the BIX to service that, to make, look, make it work as a phone. And that's fine. Uh, CAT5E is capable of carrying um, I would say more signal or uh, more sophisticated signal than just CAT3. CAT3 is just a telephone line. So yes, it is capable of handling the just the POTS line. It just doesn't work the other way. The RJ12 jack or yeah, the other jack is smaller in size. RJ45, which is the Ethernet jack, is bigger in size. You can't put that one into this one. Right, because it's just just not going to go in. Right? Uh, but <clears throat> uh, for the single line set, also you can't use the RJ45 because the single line set has RJ12 input port. Right, so basically what you do is just use a leg regular telephone cord, which is RJ12 on it. Right? Uh, and use a terminator the land room as well. Yeah, so second part of your question, uh, here, who's that? Uh, Dylan, yeah. Um, so second part of your question, uh, that line here, it can be terminated at the patch panel. So if you want to, if it is wired up in the T568 configuration, which will be the etern ethernet, Right, the blue pair is in the middle, uh, right in the middle of the jack. So those two middle prongs, that blue pair is going to be in the middle, right? No problem. And so it's going to be also just a straight through. So you can plug in a telephone line. You can you can take that line and you can terminate that at the bix on the other end, or you can take that use a regular telephone cord and plug it into a telephone outlet. So that is going to work as a telephone. So you can, you can use that. And it's a common practice. Sometimes it's being done. Uh, so you can use the, the, if it's terminated as a and certified or qualified as a ethernet link, you can use that as a telephone link. Okay. It's just, you can't use a telephone link for ethernet because it's a different type of wiring that's being used. It's a cut three still. Um, and the sizes of the jacks are, uh, you know, are not, uh, not not compatible with each other. With each other, and even then, if you change, even if you change the jack from one to another, the cable is just going to be incapable of uh, carrying that type of a signal for uh, for Ethernet. Okay. Uh, so that you can terminate here, or you can just uh, when you home run. If you know that this thing is only going to be used for the telephone, you just don't terminate it at this patch panel. You just take it somewhere else, wherever the BIX termination is, and you just terminate it at the BIX, and you flip it around, and you can grab that pair. 
Right. So it depends. Some depends on the contract, depends on the client's needs, depends on the request that uh, that's being made for installation. Uh, okay, so Graham, uh, here's a question. So in our quote, should we make note of a patch panel? Uh, I'm not going to penalize you for not making it. Okay, I just wanted you to experience that type of a thing because um, the bigger the um, the bigger the contract, the bigger the, the the more materials you're going to have for corrections, notices of change, and uh, things like that. So I just wanted you to have that experience, and I purposely try to hold you till the end to see what could it be, what could it be, what could it be. Now you know. So that's. Uh, um, that's the patch panel, all right? So I'm not going to penalize you for uh, for not uh, making uh, the notes, but in real life, you would have to make a phone call and you would just do it anyways without thinking. You would just go here, you know, yeah, okay. So if it's a regular client that you service, uh, somebody who give, feeds you the contracts all the time, or is it a new contractor you work with? you would do that instinctively because say, okay, so we have that. Uh, it, would, it would have like a, as a second nature to, 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 to fish those things out, right? To notice those things. Uh, and you would just pick up the phone call and say, okay, uh, so who's supplying the patch panel? Oh, uh, I forgot to mention that, uh, you know, can you do that? Oh, it's going to be so much, so and so extra, okay? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to. Or they say, no, no, the patch panels are there. It's going to be shipped to you. You just supply the jacks. Or sometimes they uh, ship everything to you. And you just uh, service uh, them with your knowledge and your experience and your labor. So sometimes everything's being shipped to the skids. Some of the repeatable projects, like if there is a store chain that is being serviced by some um, technical co IT company that are servicing all the type of stores around North America and they're building a new one, they're not going to bother asking you to figure out what they have it all figured out, right? In fact, some of the bigger companies, they have a huge open warehouse with just a free flat floor and <clears throat> they're servicing maybe one uh, fast food chain, maybe some hardware stores chain, maybe something else. They have a sample setup set up on the floor of how it works. So if there's time for troubleshooting, um, you just call them and they go try to simulate the problem, right? So it's all on wheels, all modular furniture, all set up working as that store, as one example. And if they are building a new store, just one more of the 2000 that they have somewhere in the whole North America, they have the list of materials and everything. They just put it in the boxes, put it on the skids, ship it to you. So you don't have to about, worry about supplying anything, uh, including the racks, cable, everything, right? But I just wanted you to go through the coating process. So I'll give you a little bit of both worlds here. Um, 911, uh, okay, so what's the 911 question here? Uh, so in our quote, should we make a note of patch panel? And now Dylan says for 911 line, what type? Okay, so for the 911 line, uh, in this case, uh, that, um, that line that goes to the 911, which is, yeah, uh, our 911 set is right here. Okay. Um, the 911 line is right here. And here's our uh, land room. Uh, in fact, in reality, uh, this is from a sort of like a real job that was done. Uh, that line was going in the ceiling over behind the offices and somewhere else in the plant that is not mentioned here. Uh, that's where the DMARC point was for the telephones. But for the for this exercise, we're going to basically assume that everything or set the scenario that everything is here. So you would not terminate that at the patch panel. You will probably terminate this thing straight onto the you know uh, onto the uh, Bix termination block or Bix connector. Um, straight on, straight on as as short as a as quick route as possible so there's not too many things in between so you would terminate that onto a bix 
the other one line that coming from the city will be on the BIX. So you will just punch it here, run the cross contact wire, punch it here, and test it, make sure it works. So that would be the 911 uh, line here. Okay. Uh, now, for the budget purposes, we should just use the RG5, IJ45 and CAT5 EES. All right. Uh, yeah. You're not, see, here's the thing, uh, you know, I'm glad you pointed it out. Uh, who is that? Dylan. Uh, okay. <clears throat> because when uh, not too many companies order CAT3 wires just to run telephones, not too many telephones are being installed, not too many single lines. So it's going to be a one single somewhere uh, for 911 and the other one single for 911 or something like that for whatever purposes. But uh, what if uh, two years down the road, that telephone set is going to be removed and because somebody needs an extra RG, uh, extra ethernet jack. So you already have the um, cable run, you just change the jacks and terminate them properly. That's why you have the service loop there. So you can reroute that somewhere and you have a service loop on the other side. So you could reroute that as well. Okay? Um, the other reason for mostly installing the um, Ethernet or CAT5 E cables is that uh, you're not going to bother storing in your office or in your building or in your company uh, cables, boxes of cables that you're rarely going to use. Right? It's just going to occupy the space. If you need one or two wires, you're just going to use the CAT5 E and use it as a telephone line. Right? Uh, all right. Uh, Another question. Good. I mean, we're getting some questions here. When busting the CAT 5E cables, can I split the bundles so that the offices on the right side don't have to have their cables routed all the way around the building? Yeah, you can. Uh, I think you, you mean that uh, once you go. Um, once you go here is um, from here. If it's that office, you can choose doing going this way or you can choose going that way or, you know, but yeah, I, I think that's what you meant, right? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So basically you take the shortest route, the most comfortable route. Okay. Um, Yeah, now that depends also by, by saying that, I'm going to say something else as well. Ideally, uh, you just plan uh, the way you want to do things. However, sometimes you're going to find out that there is just um, maybe too much stuff in the ceiling. So you're going to have to, you won't, you won't have to, the, the, you will not have the comfort of doing it that way. Okay. Uh, so you can, if you can, yes. Less cable you use, the better. And the more organized you are with things, the better. Because when you run the cables and the infrastructure system in an organized way, it is easier to troubleshoot. It's easier to find wires. Um, and you don't run into troubles later on when you try to uh, well, service the system. Uh, is there something else or is it a, yeah, so that's, uh, I think I just, uh, I hope I haven't missed anybody's question here. If I did, I apologize, but I think I covered them all. All right. So, so here's what we're going to do after we leave uh, today. Um, here is our class portal, okay? You go to the content. No, you don't go to the content. Oh yeah, if you wanna to go to the content, here is your student items. And here are the optical fiber one of two, optical fiber two of two. These are the lecture notes. And if you go to the main page of our class portal, when you see this uh, little banner, um, here is the announcement for our today's lecture. And right underneath that, there is 
another announcement that says week six lectures. Here's one lecture to watch. Here's another lecture to watch. This is the first part of the optical fiber. This is the second part of the optical fiber. And when we meet a week from now for the last time, uh, we will be able to discuss some of that th those things that maybe you're going to have some questions uh, and maybe we can review some other things. Um, and I'm going to try to see, are, going to, are we going to have enough time to write the last test? Um, I'm going to have to see that, how much time. Should I deploy the last test number three this weekend or do we have one more week? Let me just, uh, well, let me verify that, okay? Um, so if there is no any other questions, now you know what the hard loop is, you know what the dry loop is, and uh, you know about the filtering. We covered some of the questions about the assignment and some other logistic questions about what we have done. If there's any other question that comes to your mind, just uh, you know, be comfortable to ask me anything, anytime. All right. Uh, okay, so just uh, go and watch those two lectures. And we're going to meet again. Uh, some of you are going to meet on Tuesday uh, uh, for the remainder of the for the last lab, and the rest of you, everyone, we're going to see a week from now. Okay. Oh, there's one more thing here. Will the test be the same setup? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be on the same basis. Yeah. All right. Cool. No more questions. Go watch those uh, lectures. Thank you, and you're welcome. Go, uh, go watch those lectures, these two lectures, and uh, I will see you when I see you. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. And I will, I will this little lecture here, I think this short class, I will post that on the YouTube as well. Okay, see you guys. There's a stop button here. There it is. <laughs>